All right. Long time no see. So it's been a while. A lot has happened in this short period of time, but it seems like forever. Uh, basically, I just want to go over and talk about if you want to start a card store, all the costs involved and stuff like that. And just I know it seems easy from sort of an outside perspective because I was there not too long ago saying, oh, it looks so easy. So I just went ahead and did it, but it is not easy and it takes a lot of money. Sure, if you just want to start like a small store with a couple chairs and a table or two, yeah, it'll be a lot less. But my store is pretty small. It's not too big. It's about 1,200 square feet. And I'll show you. I'll do a full tour at the end. But <sighs> it takes a lot of money. <laughs> All right, let's start straight out of the gate. As soon as you get in, your landlord, especially if you have no experience in any commercial real estate, this is your first rental, your first unit, they're gonna want a larger deposit. And it sucks, but it's just what it is. My landlord wanted $4,500 deposit. Sure, you could get it back, but you'll never get back all of it. They'll keep some for something or whatever. But <clears throat> this is where you can kind of negotiate beforehand um, whether they can give you some sort of allowances towards painting, uh, new, whatever, build out. That's what they call it. Uh, <clears throat> my landlord really didn't want to give me anything. Uh, she replaced the front door, which needed to be repaired. And uh, she said she was going to fix ceiling tiles, which she still hasn't. It's been probably three months. So I don't know what the deal is with that. But anyway, <laughs> that uh, is, uh, I'll have to deal with her about that. But anyway, uh, so $4,500 straight out of the gate. That's it. It's gone out of your bank account. So we'll uh, deduct that from your everything because you can't get that back until you leave your lease in whatever it is, two years, three years, five years, whatever you sign. The longer, the better. The longer the lease, the more you can probably get out of your landlord. I sort of negotiated a longer lease, but with a sort of step up tier program. So for the first six months, I'm not paying full rent. I'm just paying common area maintenance charges and I lower rent. And this is all stuff you have to negotiate before the fact, because after you sign the lease, they're not going to want to negotiate because you signed the lease. So this is all stuff you do beforehand. So for the first six months, I don't pay full rent. And then after the six months, I pay full rent. And I have a year up until that point to exit my lease. I have to give them six months of notice. Now, I just did this just in case things didn't work out. I just wanted an exit strategy. Just in case things didn't work out, I was able to get out of a lease and not stuck in a five-year lease and not make any money. Terrible. But my goal is to actually make money and leave my job and make this my primary source of income. Yes, I am working full time and running the card store. It's an impossible task and I don't recommend anyone to do it at all. Because literally from sunup to sundown, I work. Even on my days off, I'm working. I work seven days a week, 18 hours a day. It's never ending. So if you get into this and you say I could do this full time, work full time and do this, it's, it requires so much out of you and it re requires a specific personality type. You need to hyper fixate on it and it just has to be everything. And it sucks because other things sort of take the back seat which shouldn't. All right, so $4,500 down just to get in the door. You don't even have any inventory, you got nothing. You got just an empty room, no paint, no nothing. You have nothing. I was lucky enough that I was doing this for two years beforehand. Not just this, I have my own other separate business, yes, another business that I run off of Amazon where I uh, wholesale items, home goods, has nothing to do with trading cards, it's all home goods off of Amazon that pretty much jump-started my business and was able to give me the capital infusion I needed to start this place. So I was doing that for two years. It's pretty successful. It's sort of on autopilot right now. 
just requires maybe four or five hours of work a week and I can make an extra three to four thousand dollars a month which is great so it's helping me pay the bills here I can go into what exactly I do on Amazon with home goods and stuff like that in a future video if anyone's interested but for right now it's just gonna be the card store so after the forty five hundred dollars you're gonna need or whatever your deposit is a thousand whatever mine was really high because my landlord I guess didn't trust me or I was a first it's my first unit leasing so I don't blame her so after that you're gonna need to paint the walls that costed me fifteen hundred dollars I do not paint it's terrible especially working full-time I had to I had to pretty much pay everyone for everything all I did myself well I did a lot myself <laughs> I redid the bathroom myself changed the toilet everything in there did the tiling in there uh, redid the carpet all I didn't do was paint by myself because I just wanted to get this place up and running so fifteen hundred dollars paint and like three hundred dollars in paint itself so eighteen hundred dollars for paint paint the whole unit then after that two hundred dollars here for the tiles two hundred for the the toilet bowl um various odds and ends figure another on top of the paint another fifteen hundred so right there 18 plus 15 what are we at 3300 so yeah 4500 and 3300 and you don't even have a single thing to sell yet yeah it's a lot now you need um actual stuff to store your things in slat wall display cases don't get me started with getting display cases now it's an impossible task and you're going to pay through the nose if you want new stuff I have two six foot display cases and a cash wrap and I paid twenty eight hundred dollars for th these three things and you you can't get them they're there's back order they're, they're they're just not available unless you get them used I didn't want to get them used because I wanted to start a shop that wasn't like a hole in the wall I wanted to create a premier experience for people I want people to walk in and be like wow this is a professional shop this is almost looks like a chain like I want it to just be nice so you have to spend money and for it to be nice I didn't you know, sure this is like the the sort of entry level of a nice shop this is like right after hole in the wall gamer dungeon but you still have to spend a lot of money so now $2,800 on display cases. So we're at $4,500, $3,300, and then $2,800. No inventory yet. All right, now you want tables for people to play because you need play space if you're going to run a card shop uh, to play Magic, Pokemon, Flesh and Blood, all those games. Sure, that's sort of a, a minimal capital investment. Maybe I spent three or four. They're very cheap tables, very cheap chairs. You can get away with that for now, but... In the future, you do want to upgrade those. So about three, $400 tables and chairs. It's starting to add up. Now you need your POS system. You need a computer. You need a, a actual thing to capture your payments. So computer, 400. Uh, actual credit card reader, 400. That's $800. It's definitely starting to add up. Slat wall. If you don't get it used, the freight is going to eat you alive. So one, two, four by six panels, they cost around 180 and to get them freighted to you, it's another 180 So if you don't order an obscene amount, you're going to pay a ridiculous amount. Let's say, oh, I just want two pieces now. No, you, you got to order a shit ton. Or you have to find them used, which I did, which was a blessing. I found about 1,600 linear feet of slat wall. There's this place going out of business. I went in there. He charged me $20, $20 of uh, a slat wall, which was amazing. But I had to take them down myself. But I did it. So I painted them. They look beautiful now, right? But that's another cost. It's just in slat wall alone for a unit. Not even the brackets and shelving. You're looking to spend around $1,000. So right there, another 1000 brackets shelving sure you can get the shelving from home depot but it's kind of 
a little thin and it doesn't really support the weight of booster boxes too well. But you can get them. They're around six feet. You can get them for around $10 a shelf, whatever. So figure with the slat wall, shelving, all the stuff, figure another $1,200, $1,300. You still have no inventory. You just have an empty room with fixtures and that's it. All right, so at this point in time, we're already at over $10,000 in costs and we don't have a single thing to sell yet. So it's, it's a lot, guys. You, I, I know when I first started, I was like, ah, I could probably start it and have things to sell for less than 10,000. No, it's just not the case. Unless you're getting a really, really, really small place with no place space, but you need people in your store in order to capture sales. If you can only have four people playing in your store, at any given time, you're not going to be able to capture as many sales as you can when you can have 20, 30 people in your store. Yeah, if you're going to run it alone and do it part time and not really take it seriously, yeah, you can have a very small place, but the costs are going to start eating you alive and if you get a, a really nice place and it's small. Like if you're, let's say you're on a main strip, it's a small place, you want to run it alone part time, there's so many, so many fees. <laughs> so many bills let's get into the bills now okay so rent is at the top rent with common area maintenance charge and all other things it's going to be around twenty five hundred dollars for me now now we get into phone bill hundred dollars we get into uh garbage hundred dollars we get into my pos and how it operates 150 dollars plus they take a two percent commission on all sales so it's a lot and um, so <laughs> it's a crazy amount of money and if anyone wants to start a business especially now and you want to you, you think you could do it for less than fifty thousand dollars just don't stop save up save up at least fifty thousand dollars and then start your business because within the first two or three months that 20 grand is gonna boop, be gone and it's gonna take you a very long time to recoup that investment and, and be in the plus. Um, <clears throat> sure, I opened up at a very advantageous time. I My opening day was celebrations, Pokemon release day, and I have been, I have been purchasing Pokemon for the past two years online only, so my allocations were a lot higher than someone just starting out now. If you just wanna start out now and you're just starting out, and you haven't been in the industry for any period of time, you have no reputation with any distributors, I, you can't, you just can't. I'm sorry, but you just, you can't do it. I'm having a hard time and I've been purchasing for two years and I still don't get the numbers I wanna get. I'm still only getting maybe any main set release, five or six cases, seven cases. And that's a very low amount. If you and that's it. It's not like oh let me call up again and get some more. No, you get what you get and it's done. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna take you on a quick tour of the place and we're just gonna look and we're gonna see what ten grand could get you with no inventory. Now I started I opened this place with about twenty thousand dollars in inventory. And right now I would say we've grown in the past month to around 55,000 in inventory. So we're growing steadily, not as fast as I would like to, but we're growing. And I'm just gonna take you on a complete tour. Let's do this. <laughs> All right, I'm just gonna make this really quick cause I have to open soon. Uh, this is as soon as you walk in, we got a little Christmas tree, got some, uh, Little coin operated machines. You'd be surprised how much those make during a week. Um, of course, drinks and snacks for people. Uh, it's always good. Got uh, our sleeves over here, some board games, toys, Funko Pops. We have our Pokemon display case, uh, Magic the Gathering, Flesh and Blood, some old school packs for people to buy. Just like, you know, you need some nickel and dime items. I don't know if you could see those. Yeah, just some like older vintage stuff our flesh and blood we got our um 
final oh final fantasy uh magic that's our final fantasy up there uh magic all magic here we got some metazoo uh pokemon not as much as i would like to have but it's what we have we got our display cases for singles some supplies and this is the back area some storage shipping station just forever sorting cards guys if you don't like to sort cards then i would recommend you not open a card store because you will be sorting cards for the rest of your existence um we got a little storage area in the back garbage of course always generating garbage uh, our bathroom which is clean i know shock for a card store but guys, that's pretty much it for now. If there's anything you want me to cover, just comment down below. Let me know what you want me to exactly go through. I can go over it a little bit more granular and like step by step. This is just a basic video of pretty much my story and how I got started. But I got to open soon. Guys, please, just if you really want to do it, follow your dream. I always suggest that. But be prepared to spend a lot of money. I'll catch you guys in the next one. See you.